Okay, a question that we get often is, what does alcohol do to glucose levels? We do get this question a lot. This is an interesting one. Um, so basically, due to its impact on the liver, alcoholic drinks like wine and spirits can actually lower the glucose levels that we see on the continuous glucose monitor. And the mechanisms behind this are quite complex. And I should preface this by saying this certainly doesn't mean we should be consuming more alcohol just to lower our glucose levels, but the biology is quite interesting. So under normal conditions, the liver actually generates glucose through two pathways. The first is that the liver can make glucose from scratch from other chemical building blocks in the body. And the second is that the liver can break down stored chains of glucose um, to release into the bloodstream. So the, both of these are separate pathways from glucose that we get in the bloodstream by eating. And these processes are intended to basically ensure that our blood sugar doesn't ever fall too low. So it's thought that drinking and alcohol decreases the liver's ability to make the new glucose from scratch, like I mentioned, and that can therefore lead to lower circulating glucose levels. But the body is very smart, and to counter this decrease, alcohol also stimulates the liver to break down more of that stored glucose. So in theory, it should sort of balance each other out. The alcohol stops the liver from being able to produce glucose as effectively, but then it increases um, the breakdown of glucose to kind of keep things stable. Um, and there's several studies on this. So there's actually research showing that if you consume a small amount of alcohol, equivalent to about one standard drink just before a carbohydrate-rich meal, it's been shown to significantly lower post-meal glucose and insulin levels. Um, and that compared to if the meal was eaten without um, the alcohol. It is also very important to mention, though, that chronic heavy alcohol use um, is associated with liver damage and increased risk of diabetes. So it's really that that small amount that has been shown in the research to um, have this lowering effect on glucose. The chronic heavy alcohol use is going to be, you know, extremely damaging to the liver um, and for overall metabolic health. And again, all of this is just to describe the biology, and none of this means we should be consuming more alcohol just to lower uh, our glucose levels. And so is this something that we can extrapolate to all diets or are there nuances pertaining to specific types of diets that people might consume? It's a great question. And actually the situation is different for um, people on specific diets. And the ones to mention are those people who are fasting quite a bit or who are on a very low carbohydrate diet and in a ketogenic state. And the reason for this is because these people are going to have less of that stored glucose in the liver, that glycogen, which is the stored change of glucose, um, they're going to have less of that in their liver. And so, um, as I mentioned previously, um, alcohol blocks that ability to make new glucose, but it balances it by increasing the breakdown of glucose in the liver. But if you already don't have a lot of that liver to be that liver glucose to be broken down, you could get into a state where you actually end up inducing a very low glucose state in the body by drinking alcohol while on a low carb diet. And, um, it can get dangerously low in extreme cases. Um, alcohol in the context of fasting or a ketogenic diet can lead to a hypoglycemic glycemic state that can lead to things like, like seizures or coma. So it's really important for people on a low carb diet or who are fasting to be very, very cognizant of alcohol intake. 